draping designers, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is budget, especially when you're first starting out, right? Let's just think about it. Those client, you know, the things that they request for, it sounds amazing, right? When you think about how much you can actually charge them. But guys, think about the, the fabric you got to buy. Think about the high-end professional hardware. That really can leave you feeling a little... Mm, <laughs> I don't know. It could leave you feeling a little like deflated a little bit. But guess what? This episode is really all about the draping magic and how you can actually drape it up on a dime. So let's dive in. Welcome back to another episode of Raising the Ball, which is the number one draping podcast on the internet. And as always, guys, I'm your fabulous host, Precious Stevens, a.k.a. The Draping Queen. And I'm bringing you the ins and the outs of the event draping world. Now, here at the Posh Academy, guys, we only believe in dropping gems. So in every episode, we discuss the secrets, the challenges, and the untold stories of event draping. So let's dive in. All right, guys, so we want to talk about how to really stretch our draping dollars a little further. Number one, I want to talk about the fabric frenzy on a budget. Guys, design the fabrics can, yeah, they look good, right? They real luxurious. They they premium fabrics. But guess what? They cost a little coin, right? They can tend to break the bank because you're paying for premium. But I want you to kind of, especially in the beginning, guys, I want you to explore some other alternatives, right? One of the things that, or some of the things that I actually did in the beginning, which is how I was able to really lace my inventory with things that stood out, I would go to the discount fabric stores, guys. It was gems in those stores, right? Not to mention, if you go on some of these online fabric stores as well, they have so many different remnant sales, right? Or they'll have... Uh, drastic drastically discounted sales on the fabric it's not that nothing's wrong with it it's just that it may be out of season they may have overflow it could be so many different things but the only thing guys these are the bargains that you got to search for them right <laughs> so I also want you to think about hitting up your local thrift shops guys guess what they have a lot of hidden gems think about it a lot of you know especially the the more mature community the the, the ones that actually would you know, donate to these places. A lot of those ladies, they had sewing businesses or they would do a lot of sewing. And I'm just trying to tell you now as a, a fabric supplier myself, I know firsthand the amount of fabric that you just end up getting rid of because it may just be scraps. But realistically, guys, they're for me, I'm a draping designer, so I don't really see it as a piece of scrap. I say, I could use this. <laughs> I know I ain't the only one. Y'all probably like that too. You know, you don't never really want to get rid of fabric because there's so many different things you can do with it. It's real versatile. And guys, those people do the same exact thing. They either donate it to these thrift shops or these big companies got to get rid of it. So you need to get from behind that computer and go and walk the neighborhood and find your little moms and pop stores because guys, they have gems in there. But let me tell you something. Let me tell you a secret. When you first go in, I need you to go all the way in the back because <laughs> that's where it is, right? Normally they're discounted um, pieces or the discounted table. It's not the first thing you see when you go in. So they'll normally have a section, clearance section or some kind of red dot, blue dot, green dot, some kind of dot. Just look for the dot because you're going to have to search through it though. But if you really learn texture, you can almost instantly feel a piece of fabric. And you'll know exactly what to do with it in your draping, right? You'll know if it's loose, like some kind of chiffon type of texture. You already know that this is something that could be draped on an arch. You can easily do it on a gazebo. You can use it a, a lot of different ways, right? If it's something with a stiffer, uh, a stiffer, firm texture, it doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means you need to know how to use it. And if you don't, keep watching this video. Now, number two, guys, this is the power of repurposing. Now, I need you to stay with me here. I want you to think outside the box. Now, this one is really to help those that's just getting in, don't really have a lot of money to invest right now into the premium fabrics, which I totally get, right? But think of different ways that you can use things that you already have, right? In the beginning, <laughs> I said to say, but I'm being real truthful with y'all. I'm being real truthful with you guys. In the beginning, I would use almost anything I could possibly think of to really give me the, the full look that I was trying to achieve because them panels at $50 a pop, I wasn't able to get 16 and 20 panels back then, right? So I would use sheets. I would use tablecloths. I would use anything I could to really transform my design and create the swags that I needed. Now, 
truth be told, I still use tablecloths to this day. I because if you look at it, a tablecloth on average, if you're getting it from you know the design uh, the core companies, is 156 inches in length. Guys, that's a 12 foot drape all day long. <laughs> if you know how to do a little sewing, you get what I'm saying? So main thing is you still can utilize and repurpose different things to really get what it is that you need to get in the beginning. But guys, look at me, paying attention. Don't stay there because this is really the, this is not really where you want to kind of think and do if you're trying to level up. This is just you getting started. This is you being able to achieve the look that you're trying to achieve when you when you bargain basement Betty yourself. But the goal is to transition into Betty with the bag. Now, when you Betty with the bag, don't be out there with the sheets on your backdrop. I'm trying to tell you, I don't want to see that. And the premium people, they ain't going to hire you for that because that's not what they attracted to. But in the beginning... Here is your green light. This is your pass to so go ahead and do it. Okay. Okay, guys, that brings us to number three, which is the magic of multi use. You want to think of investing in some versatile pieces, right? Main thing is neutrals. You can never go wrong and in invest in neutral color fabric because people use them all the time, right? They could be dressed up. They could be dressed down. You can use lighting to kind of change the color a little bit. So definitely always build your inventory with new different tints, right? Different tints, different shades. You can have some ivory. You can have some cream. You can have some white. It's so many different shades and tints in the neutral, you know, in the neutral family. So you can kind of get crazy there and still be safe because you're going to use them all the time. But another thing that I like doing when I'm getting fabric and guys, I still do this one to this day. If I'm getting fabric is I like to multi-use, meaning I will get drape that is 30 feet in length, right? Because for me, I'm always using a valence. Uh, for me, valence is my signature design, right? But if I'm using the valence, and let's just say it's a printed fabric, in a different design, I may not want to use that printed fabric as a valence. I may want to use it as two panels. So that's why a lot of my fabric, especially, especially my specialty fabric, I will keep it at 30 feet in length because I can sew a seam on either end or you know both ends, and now I can use it in a different design. I could just thread one in, thread the other end on my crossbar and now I have two panels. So I do that a lot guys. And not to mention, this is one way I'm able to save money and I'm also able to save on storage because if I didn't do it that way, then I would quite naturally have to have four different pieces or maybe really five different pieces of fabric. So you definitely want to think of getting the most out of the fabric you're using and you'll easily be able to do that with your neutrals because there's so many different things you can do with that. So I'm hoping that one definitely help you kind of, you know, use what you have in multiple different ways. The biggest thing is if you're shopping for these fabrics, uh, the, this different fabric that I kind of told you in uh, step one, which is if you're going out to the neighborhood, keep it at 30 feet, right? You're going to I don't want you to right away kind of have them chop it up per panel. If you do the multi-use, you'll it'll go a long way, trust me. Which takes us to the next one, guys, and that's bartering. Bartering is still a very unique way. It's a very easy way to, one, tap into someone else's, uh, you know, pleather or services that they offer, as well as not having to go and fork the cost for everything on your own. I want you to go and find, go find you at least two vendors, right? Go find you two solid vendors. You guys are at the same level. You're kind of, you know, striving to grow and all that. You guys got to be in alignment, right? You can't be you're trying to grow and they're stuck at where they are, that's not going to make a good relationship. But if you guys are like on this journey together, you guys can really trade so many different services that you have. And maybe you do draping and maybe they do florals or whatever that case may be, right? And if you, you kind of make this little joint merger, you guys' journey will be cut in half, right? So if you're draping and they're doing florals and let's just say you do a style shoot, you both can use the same photos and build a portfolio and you could do different things. Maybe you change up the design a little bit. I know in the beginning I was everything. <laughs> I was the drape, the draping stylist. I was the floral person. I did the treat table. So can you imagine what, even if I was doing a mock setup myself, can you imagine how long it would take me to do all of those different pieces? And then by then, you know, you got to show up in the photo like, Hey, like you super happy. I wasn't, I was tired. So that time would have been cut, cut in half. If I just partnered with somebody had that style shoot, or even if I'm doing do, you know, even if I'm doing an event, 
when they get requests, I would prefer, or we would have a relationship where I'm their preferred vendor for draping. And if I get a request, they my preferred vendor for floral. So guys, I'm trying to tell you, this is going to definitely get you further faster. So definitely start utilizing and start bartering your services because this is the best way to leverage what you naturally do, which, you know, people love it. So that's what makes it a win-win for everyone. Bartering is a sure way to build a great partnership, which can be very useful these days. And that takes us to number four, guys which is befriend the barter system. This is something that still works to this day, right? You want to be able to network with event vendors that can definitely help you along this journey where you don't have to buy the things that they already supply, right? I like that. You don't have to buy what they already supply. I, I used to be a... a rapper in my heyday psych I'm playing but guys definitely find you two vendors that you want to connect with that you guys can barter each other and make it a win-win right if you are doing draping and maybe they're doing florals you guys can partner together and do a style shoot you can really build your your portfolio to kind of show you know showcase what it is that you do not to mention you can become each other's preferred vendor if they get requests uh for you know draping someone come to them or actually they know someone they could tell they could refer you and vice versa. If someone come to you like they want draping, but hey, by the way, do you know anyone about you can refer them? That makes one an easy marketing solution, right? You guys are each other's uh marketing uh, uh, uh an additional stream of market that you don't gotta pay for. That's free marketing, right? Then also realize how this can just accelerate your visibility. You're getting in front of people that you don't even know. And then nine times out of 10, the referral system, that's the honor system. Like people still, they, they buy much quicker if you were, if your business was referred by someone else, right? Because that's social proof that, hey, someone worked with you, they liked your services, whatever the case may be, they are more inclined to book with you. So definitely go locate you two vendors that you can partner with make sure that you guys are in alignment, <laughs> make sure you guys are on the same level and make sure you guys are still like eager and hungry to grow. You can't be over here and, you know, with the growth mindset, yeah, I'm looking to grow. I'm looking to really take my, my game to the next level. And they over here, like I'm good where I'm at because that ain't going to make a good, so that ain't going to make a good partnership. So definitely that is your homework for the night. Go get yourself two vendors and you will see the beauty behind partnering and using the barter system. So there you have it. See, draping can be done on a budget and it's totally doable, guys. With a little bit of creativity and some resourcefulness, you guys can really create stunning events without breaking the bank. I want you to remember, though, the most basic fabrics can really be transformed into any kind of masterpiece, right? It's not really all about the fabric. It's really about who's, you know, who's actually handling the fabric who's actually manipulating the fabric this is where no matter what the design looks like this is where your personality your signature look is going to come out I can tell instantly when someone if I'm searching the social media threads I can tell instantly if it was someone that was in my class without me even seeing their name it's something about the signature look and that I am passing off, right? And they're able to implement it. They're able to kind of take a piece of it, even though they're still making it their own. But I can tell that I had my little, my little secret sauce in there. And that's the same thing that you want to do for the, the whatever it is that you're doing. Realize that don't give the power all to the fabric because the fabric is just there. You are the creative behind it, right? So you got to learn to control the fabric. You got to learn to manipulate the fabric and make it do what you want to do. Now, if you're looking to grow your draping business, guys, get started by grabbing my free beginner's guide to premium draping to accelerate your growth. You can now get access by joining my private Facebook group by simply clicking the link in the description. Once you're inside, only thing you got to do is check the guide section and you'll see it pinned there, right? Now, if you found this video to be helpful, I want you to show your girl some love by dropping a like and subscribe to the best draping channel on the internet. Now, you guys know what's next. I love to keep the conversation going. So let me know down in the comments comments how long have you been draping but don't forget to tell me your name and your city thanks for tuning in and as always keep hustling guys and raising that bar i'm precious stevens of the posh academy signing off